And that product is Drupal 8. <laughs> <laughs> you can stick that onto the back of anything that you say. <laughs> Yeah, right? Yes. Deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. Hello, Drupal. Uh, my name is Beth Tucker Long, and I am so excited that Drupal 8 is out. Way to go. We're very proud of you. And I am really excited about Drupal 8 because it represents so much community involvement, working together. I'm so excited that we have so many big projects from the PHP side of things and the Drupal side of things working together. And I just can't wait to see with all this brain power that we have merged into this project where we go from here. We are Cabo Vertesi. My name is Jam. I work for Acquia. My title is Evangelist, and I'm in developer relations. We have a special guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself? I am Beth Tucker Long, and I am an independent consultant working with PHP. Um, I do work with Drupal on a number of my projects and lots of other things, because as a consultant, I work on whatever you'll pay me to work on. So. <laughs> The life of a consultant. Right. And over the last however many years it's been, you were actually, in a way, at the center of what I like to call the PHP renaissance, or you were definitely a, a keen observer of this coming together of all these different PHP technologies from being sort of very disparate, siloed implementations of the language back to being something like a community. Um, I'm thinking particularly of your role at PHP Architect. Yes. Um, so I worked at PHP Architect for seven years, and I was involved in tech when PHP Fig was started at PHP Tech, and it was a very exciting time. Also, I was doing consulting then as well, so it was an exciting time for me as well because having to work with all these disparate technologies that did not work well with each other at all was frustrating, and now it is, it is becoming a much happier place for people to work together. So. Yeah. One of the things that we've talked about with other, uh, with some of the other people is exactly what you say, that for consultants, for a lot of developers out there, we have to be able to jump between different um, technology stacks, between different uh, frameworks. And this, this fig era makes it a lot easier for them. Is that, was that like a founding motivation for you to get involved in this? Or were there other things behind it? What do you think is the best benefit that made you want to get involved with PHP fig? Sure. Um, I should clarify, I'm not directly involved in PHP FIG because I'm not a project owner. So I am just a big supporter of what FIG is trying to do and a big encourager of trying to get other people <laughs> who are project owners involved in FIG and um, encouraging people to follow um, the standards that FIG is setting forward. As a consultant, I have seen so many different people's code and I have tried to work with, <laughs> get so many different people's code to work together and without any sort of standards, it was a very frustrating time, shall we say. And so many people and so many projects had this sort of pride of, well, you can obviously tell people are working on my project because their code looks like this. And while that is sort of a neat thing to be able to say, like my code looks different from everyone else's because I am a X you know, application developer, um, it makes it really hard for anyone who has to come in and work with your code who's not familiar with that or who has to try to get your code to talk to somebody else's code. And so I, I really love the fact that now we can say, hey, we are all PHP developers and these are the technologies that we use to help us. And as PHP developers, we are putting forth these standards so we can all work together and not be so splintered. Mm -hmm. So that was my main motivation for supporting FIG. It makes us much more efficient developers as well. Not only can we reuse a lot more good supported code, but once we've learned a set of principles, as long as whatever else we want to work with is, is meeting PSR standards, for example, then we can probably jump right into them and get to work. 
definitely. And even projects that don't support the FIG standards yet, um, I think it still makes things easier as a whole because so many projects are becoming more open to working with other projects. So even if they haven't necessarily gotten all of the standards, at least projects are now aware that people want them to work together. And so the, the development that's happening moving forward, even if it's not officially FIG compliant, seems to be supporting the mindset of we need to work together. And I want my code to be reusable in other places and easy to be reused. So even if projects aren't necessarily on board with FIG, I feel that just the landscape mentality has changed as a whole to something more positive because of the work that FIG has been doing. So set the scene. Um, you were probably even a co-organizer. You were at PHP Tech when mm -hmm. um, late one night, I don't know how many people had this crazy idea. Um, you know, in German, we might call it a schnapps idee, um, which is the kind <laughs> of idea you have when you're having schnapps. Like, we need to, this all needs to, let's make a standards group. Let's do, you were there, right? Set the scene. How was that? What was going on? Well, actually, I was working at the time. So I was in the building, but not in the room when it happened. Oh. Um, but the stories that I've heard, <laughs> like, um, were that it was a, a, you know, a dark, hazy room with lots of alcohol and lots of cheering. And yeah, you know, like all great ideas are born, right? <laughs> yeah. So Cal Evans told me that um, the people that were in the room thought it was a great idea and put this thing together. And then there was a lot of hate. What happened <laughs> next? Yes, there was a lot of hate afterwards. Um, I feel that with most landscape changing decisions, you know, uh, as a species, we really dislike change. Um, so anytime there's something new, there's always resistance. And this was, this was a really, really big shift in mentality. And there was a lot of animosity about, um, well, who do these people think they are telling me I have to conform to the standards they think are best? Um, so there was a lot of, I'm fine if we all get along as long as we're doing my standard, not yours. Um, so right away, the animosity, I felt at least, was not necessarily towards the idea of standardizing and working together, um, which is nice, but there was a lot of animosity about whose standard we were going to use and why why certain people had the right to tell other people to standardize on which standard um so that took that took several years of working through and probably still isn't quite officially worked through but we're, it's getting better i think also the the name change that the group under underwent fairly rapidly also helped the helped the shift in perceptions right originally it was founded as something like a standards a PHP standards group or standards, yeah, something. and then yeah, standards compliance group or something, right? And renaming it the framework interoperability group immediately gave it a much more positive spin. Yes, it did. Um, although then there's a lot of complaints about, well, I'm not a framework, but you know, so well, there's all right. you, know, you can never make everyone happy, no. but it does it does put it in a much more like positive light like we're all working together let's embrace the I, part of the idea that everybody seems to like and then we'll we'll work on the parts that people don't like okay. with this in mind what do you think is the most important psr in terms of actually unifying what people do um the actual fig psr you mean yeah yeah and you're allowed to choose ones that haven't been accepted yet we won't we won't tell <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, wow. The most important thing, PSR. That, this is in terms of making it easier to work together. Um, I guess in my day to day life, the PSR that affected me the most are the actual like coding standards. <laughs> you know, um, just because. I don't write a major framework. So some of the th requirements about how to write your framework to work with other things, it's already architected by the time I get it, so I just use it. But, you know, the spacing issues and the formula, 
form format issues, um, which cause so much, you know, ire in the community. Um, those are the ones that affect me most day to day, and the ones that I try to get people who work with me to follow the most because. If our code all looks the same, it's a lot easier to scan through. It's a lot easier to read through. It has really made things easier coming into a new project if they follow, you know, the fig coding standards as well. Mm -hmm. So I would say probably on a big scale, that's probably not the most important one community wide, but that's the most important one in in my day to day life. Mm -hmm. And in some way, I wonder if uh, if we'll we'll start seeing a peer pressure effect this way. I mean, I, I uh, worked really hard to get my personal code to follow PSR um, 0 and 1. No, and 1 and 2. 1 and 2. Yeah. Well, it can, be, it can be started with 1, and then you can move into 2. Yeah, which is exactly what I did. And then I popped open Drupal 8 and started to rage that, dang it, those, those uh, we're using, still using two spaces to indent. It should be four. And, uh, <laughs> that's, where the, yeah, that's where Fig got it wrong, though, because two spaces is the one true way. Not tabs, <laughs> not four spaces. And we will defeat that. No, uh, no. So we're out. No, but I wonder. I wonder if <laughs> that's it. Throw it all away and start over. <laughs> but I wonder if we'll start to see a bit of peer pressure, that you get developers coming into projects um, that are relatively uh, PSR friendly, or, yeah, Fig friendly, like, like Drupal, and going, well, I write with four spaces. And curly braces on the next line. Sorry about you. Yeah, I think I think what will happen over time is that, you know, as long as we, as a community, are encouraging new developers to be fig compliant as they come into it, non fig compliant code is going to start looking like old legacy code. Mm -hmm. And so I think I think you're right in that there probably will be some peer pressure in the fact that you don't want your code to look old the moment you write it. So it will, it will start to be start to be the way to tell old code, I guess, from, from so newer code. How do, you, how do you feel about how do you feel about Drupal eight? Just in general? Well, I could so how do you feel about <laughs> Drupal eight as the first product of this convergence in PHP? Somehow the you know dependency management and, and code interoperability has produced this uh, meta product, which is which is a combination of, of code from across uh, a dozen, twenty different open source projects, and we, we call it Drupal eight, but it's this it's a really magnificent combination of different stuff. Um, my favorite thing about that, besides the fact that I think it's going to become a lot easier to work with, is that um, it has really forced the issue of getting our communities to work together. We've for so long been siloed into oh, I'm a PHP developer, I only write plain old PHP. I'm a Drupal developer, I only work with Drupal. Or I'm a Symfony developer, I only work with Symfony. You know, and we've just been so isolated in what we've done. And now we have one project where all of those people are together into one project is, I think, forcing the community to address the issue of how isolated we've become and allowing us to all have a project that we can contribute to, that we can work with, that we can feel a sense of pride because our our piece or our personal piece of PHP is participating and is a part of this project. And so it's really allowing um, so much more unity just between the different developer types. And I'm excited to see more projects pulling in those different viewpoints and I guess capitalizing on the fact that different communities have different specialties and different ways of looking at things and analyzing things and different worst case scenario planning and we can all benefit from the the sharing of this knowledge that we've grown in each of our different areas. We've had some great I'm sorry, I'm gonna jump on top of what you're <laughs> saying. We've uh, <laughs> we've had some great conversations. <laughs> Um, especially at, at, at uh, PHP conferences and Symphony conferences with people. We'll go and present and we'll talk about Drupal 8 as this, this first integrated product and what you can do with it. And before the session, people go, oh, you know, I don't use the CMS. I build it all from scratch. And it sounds like I feel like I'm talking to somebody from 2009. Um, <laughs> really, yeah, a lot of us were, were around then. So <laughs> they, they really poo-poo the idea just because it's CMS or because they would have used Drupal <clears throat> 
uh, in particular in Please, yeah, 2009, or 2007, right? And then we can give the presentation and go, oh, well, you know, this is how you architect a, a large multi-headed beast where this CMS is just a part of it and fits smoothly into the rest of it. Uh, mm -hmm. It really, I, I mean, I, I feel like this can really change people's perspective on actually how to work with the frameworks. Also from Infine, Drupal is not a yeah. kind of project, it's a component. Yeah. Right. Outsource, really outsource, don't, don't write a CMS ever again, you know, outsource that <laughs> and get on with what you what's interesting. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the great things about this now, when you're talking about, you know, talking to those people who are like, I do it all from scratch, I don't need to, or I only use this, I don't need to use anything else, is that the conversation now is not, you have to stop using your thing and switch to ours, mm -hmm. because that's what the conversation has always been. And now we don't have to tell people to give up their technology. Now we say, your technology is awesome, and you can use it with ours to make things even better. Mm -hmm. So I think I think the, the discussion is getting more more friendly as well. So yeah, right now now take your awesomeness and, and let's do it then and ours and let's put it together. Instantly. Yeah, here's something Our even awesome is clearly more awesome than yours. You should swap. Exactly, because that that's instantly a confrontational discussion. So. Now we're working together instead of confronting. So we talk a lot with, uh, yeah, with other consultants, developers, and like Jam said, our first time we're giving this session is going to be in Mumbai. And one of the things we've heard a lot from shops uh, that are going to be at the session is they're not interested in standards. They're not interested in uh, best practices. They're interested in just get it done. we got to get it out the door fast. And I'm going to jump in and do it quick and dirty. And it's partly because we have to learn frameworks, new frameworks quickly. And it's partly just because of the, the, frankly, the pace of business in this industry. So what's your argument? Why should these people care about the interoperability era? So as a consultant, I completely understand that mindset at times. Um, because when you're a consultant, people are not paying you to learn new things. They are not paying you to spend time to do things the right way because the people hiring you don't understand what you're doing on the back end. All they understand is how long it takes you to do it and how much that's going to cost them. And they don't care about anything beyond that. And so it becomes very difficult to, I guess, convince yourself that you need to have that time to do those things. And learning a new framework is a big undertaking. It, it's a lot of work. It's a big shift in how you do things. It makes it uncomfortable to code again for a while because you're retraining even just your fingers on how to type, you know? It's amazing the muscle memory that you get coding things. And, you know, it's, it's a big shift. It's a lot of work, and there's no immediate benefit to that work. It's not an instant benefit. It's a long-term benefit. And so when you're in the thick of things and you're stressed and you have a deadline looming, those long-term benefits are really hard to buy into. So what I try to do with the other consultants that I work with or with the clients that I work with is I try to really quantify those long-term benefits. And sometimes I win and sometimes I don't, but I try to at least make people aware that there are long-term benefits and consequences of these rush decisions that you're making and these shortcuts that you're taking. And... I hope at least that people are making an informed decision when they decide to do things quick and dirty. And, you know, in some cases, maybe quick and dirty is fine. You know, hey, we've got this thing. We're only using it for a couple of weeks. I swear we're going to throw it away for real this time. No, and <laughs> nothing, nothing lasts longer than a temporary fix. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know. Um, but on the flip side, you know, like you said, Things last forever. If you do it the right way, it's easier to reuse it in the future. So writing a quick and dirty thing 10 times is, you know, going to take longer than writing it the right way once and being able to reuse it. Yeah. One we, of the things we heard from Sebastian Bergman, what uh, you were going to say? Pretty much. Yeah, is, um, is time and again studies have shown that, yeah, okay, there's a 30% extra time uh, requirement when you start writing unit tests the first time in the code hard to keep your head around, it's a slow process, takes you longer, but yeah. the long run, you can expect... You make that up, 
and then you get a 60% yeah. productivity gain in, in the best cases by building tests into your, into your development workflow. Yeah. 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 The problem is a lot of these consulting companies are only involved in that beginning time frame. So mm -hmm. they're they're required to take on that burden of the extra 30% work on the front end, but they never see the 60% gain because they're no longer on the project when that comes into play. Although I wonder if if another another perspective on this efficiency of tools discussion would be hey so um, you know Drupal 8 might be a lot to wrap your head around. You have to learn this new CMS and figure out the module system and whatever you're doing. But once you have a, a tool set that's quite comprehensive and solves a lot of the web use case, right, and you're fluent in it, then I I know there's no data out there, but I imagine that you also gain a, a productivity win. Um, and then, you know, because I'm a fanboy, I could also say, well, it's probably more secure and it's really well-maintained and supported. And so, of course, you know, yeah, that's a bonus as well. Sure. Um, from the consultant viewpoint, that's true as long as you are able to choose the technology stack that you're working on. But in many times in consulting, you don't get that choice. So you spend all this time investing and becoming fluent in Drupal, and then you get a slew of WordPress projects, and it doesn't help you at all. Yeah, so that can be very tough buy-in as well from the consulting viewpoint. But I think that if we can continue to get buy-in from the project owners and managers who are, who are architecting these systems, then the consultants that come in will have to sort of take up that viewpoint as well because that will be the environment that they're working on. And so consultants tend to work more in legacy systems than in, in new, newer systems because newer systems tend to have a developer team who's working on it and they don't bring in consultants right away. You bring in consultants when, oh my gosh, that's horrid code. I don't want to look at it. Bring in a consultant because I'm too busy just trying to put out these fires over here to keep things running. And that's when consultants get brought in. So I think the buy-in has to be from the project owners first before we ever have a hope of getting consultants on board. But hopefully over time, we're going to see more and more products that use, for example, ESR compliant method methodologies, testing, yep. what have you. And over time, your job as a consultant uh, will become better, you know, more bearable, more productive, because you're going to see more compliant code, stuff that you understand off the bat, you know, things that have been tested along the way. Well, at the yes. very least, like the easy one to convince people of is using external libraries and, and having something available like Composer, having something available like Color Dependency Injection means you, you just need to write less code. Um, Definitely. Component libraries are usually an easy thing to convince people of. Yeah. Although in some consulting projects, you're not allowed to use external things that aren't already on the server. So that can be a tough sell. It depends. So, But with a component library, if you can't use it, you still have to write it from scratch. So if you can use it some of the time, it's still an improvement over not being able to use it any of the time. Boy, I, I was going to say I've never encountered that, but I remember one project five or six years ago where the environment was such like we couldn't get anything installed on the server or any components without going through an IT approval workflow. It's for a university. This wasn't like a high security project. But we had to go yeah, through Universe. Yeah, yeah, it was nuts. So, like every couple of days, there was another email, and because in our case, it was every Drupal module we had to ask permission. And yes, like you use yep. hundred modules on the project. Yeah, and anything dealing with uh, healthcare or medical industry, oh, yeah, everything has to be audited and approved by a security team before you can use it. So, using a whole bunch of different, com you know, component library stuff can be an excruciatingly painful process in those types of environments. Which is why in those types of environments, hopefully they've had a framework approved and at least you have a framework that you can use. <laughs> oh. That's the easy win, actually. But it, I mean, at least in, in healthcare and in, there, there are certain environments where the security is warranted. You know, I was building the brochure web, for sure where front end for a university. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> need to authorize what slideshow we're using. <laughs> oh. So we'd like you to do <clears throat> Uh, a, a sort of a, a specific greeting to our session and to the Drupal world. And 
most people are going for something like uh, hi Drupal, my name is such and so, and congratulations on getting D8 out and welcome to the broader PHP world. And and I'm excited you're here because, or you should be excited about the following possible some 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 upbeat statement like that, welcome welcoming us into the into the fold essentially. Welcome us into the fold and tell us why we why we're excited or why you're excited about it. Okay. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hello, Drupal. Uh, my name is Beth Tucker Long, and I am so excited that Drupal 8 is out. Way to go. We're very proud of you. And I am really excited about Drupal 8 because it represents so much community involvement, working together. I'm so excited that we have so many big projects from the PHP side of things and the Drupal side of things working together. And I just can't wait to see, with all this brain power that we have merged into this project, where we go from here. You want to come to a DrupalCon? Do I want to come to a DrupalCon? I would love to. Hey, yeah. so, <laughs> Beth, thank you so much for no taking the time to talk with us. We really, really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you in person. Um, Terry, thank you for being so patient and sleeping until right now. Oh, nice. That was yeah. very Perfect helpful. Time. Good job. Yes. All right. So, Wait, Harry's wait, first, wait, first podcast. Thanks, Beth. Thanks. Yep, no problem. <laughs> awesome. <laughs>